Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics. The battle for Undo State is still in the news as the State House of Assembly has called on the State Chief Judge Justice Oluwatoyin Akeredolu to set up a panel to investigate the allegations leveled against the Deputy Governor Agbola Ajayi. However, the Chief Judge has refused to do so, saying due process was not followed during the impeachment process against the Deputy Governor and that the state assembly was unable to get a two-third majority required by the 1999 constitution for setting up a pro panel. If this is true, why weren't the due process followed? Joining us to throw more light on this is the Deputy Speaker of Ondo State House of Assembly, Mr. Right Honorable Iroju Ogudeji. Uh, welcome to our program. Thank you. Good evening. And let me also uh, introduce another person who will be part of this conversation, Femi Lawson, uh, an indigenous of Ondo State who is also a public affairs analyst. You're welcome, Femi Lawson. It's my pleasure. Yeah, let me start with um, the, one of the men in the high of the storm. Uh, let me start by asking you, the report says, or the report in different media, is that you are suspended. How true is that position? Well, thank you. Uh, I, uh, the speaker announced on the floor of the house three days ago <clears throat> during plenary that uh, myself and three other lawmakers then suspended according to a directive from the governor and the chairman of our party. So that was what the, the speaker told us. And we find out to know our offense and where they derive their power and uh, <clears throat> authority for such suspension. He said the governor and the chairman of the party directed him to suspend us from going on with our legislative, constitutional legislative assignment. So that is all what we, okay. we see for now. Uh, it's quite laughable, the narration you've just given us, and probably we need to put it on record that we plan to speak with the spokesperson of the State House of Assembly, but he said it will be busy this time. So we may not be able to confirm some of the statements you've made. But let me also speak to Femi Lawson. Uh, Femi Lawson, I'm sure you've been following this development from time to time, and you've even been on this program to talk about it. Uh, looking at what the the state chief judge has said, is there anything to fault in our position? Well, uh, in the position of the law, this is, uh, is, of course, is the position of the law, and uh, we must understand that she is the interpreter of the law as far as the state is concerned. But that position does not give no right justification the action of some of the members of the state of our country. In actual fact, I'm even happy that it is the country of our country that we are brought to speak on this basic advice. I we may need to ask it how properly constituted was the low state of our assembly, which he was a member of when the former deputy governor and Apache Adolanushi was refused, you know. As the deputy governor to the former governor, which I think is He wants the National Assembly, the same route that the Assembly is following today, by suspending some members of the party. Well, the same route they follow, that led to the president was later notified you know, by the court. What the question should be here is the moral justification that some of these people have to have taken the mandate given by the former system. The political parties and other political parties have still been given. It is very unfortunate that Murat is still on the part of our police. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is quite getting interesting. Let me go back to the deputy speaker. He has mentioned something very critical that uh, it is about who is the victim this time around, that we see politicians engage in courts, this kind of lawlessness. Is it because you are on the anti-impeachment list that you are against this 
and, and uh, probably a lesson to learn for all of you as politicians. Well, thank you. Unfortunately, I could not hear Mr. Femi Lawson properly. <laughs> but uh, let me say this. Can I help you to that, rephrase what uh, you said? For purpose of tension with two other lawmakers, is not uh, connected with our position that we dissociate ourselves from the purported impeachment of the deputy governor of the state. However, the 14 lawmakers that signed the purported impeachment process, which was read at the floor of the House during the plenary, and ruled upon by the Speaker of the House, they will not form the two-third majority as dictated and analyzed by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Section 188.1-11, as the case may be. And I want to believe that maybe that is the major reason why the Chief Judge of the State refused to set up a panel of inquiry to investigate the purported uh, allegation leveled against the deputy government. Because my, my worry is, uh, apart from the number, because we were doing our calculation yesterday, that out of 26, we should have up to uh, uh, maybe 14 and a half, or I'm mean, sorry, 17, 17.3. Uh, and in this case, we have three that were said to have actually joined the 14. How true is that position? Do we just have 14 or we now have 17? And what really, um, uh, how did the three get added to the 14? Let me quickly put the record straight. Okay. If you go through the, the, what, the, 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 the provision of section 188 of 1999 Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, the position is clear. There are procedures and processes and stages of the impeachment of a governor or a deputy governor, as the case may be. In this case, the total membership of Ondo State House of Assembly is 26. And for any governor or deputy governor, according to that section of the Constitution that I've mentioned, to be impeached, the first stage is one third of the total member who have to in fact, prepare and sign an impeachment letter that will be submitted to the speaker. And the speaker will rule that the impeachment letter will be served to the person to be impeached. That is the first leg. So after that leg, the next step is after which the deputy governor must have replied, whether or not he replied to the allegation level against him. After seven days, of receipt of that impeachment process, Mr. Speaker is expected to make sure that the impeachment process is served from the deputy governor, from which, by which the deputy governor will now have 14 days to reply. So after that, according to that the, the, the provision, the House will now sit at a plenary where a vote of two-third majority will not be cast at the open plenary, not signature of members this time around, but vote of members. Okay. And to the majority, a simple arithmetic of 26 is 18. So in this case, nine of us that do not believe in the impeachment, we have written to the speaker and the clerk of the house that we dissociate ourselves. And you know the import of that. When you deduct the nine from 26, you know the total number remaining. You will have uh, 17. And in this case, only 14 members signed the impeachment process, meaning that three abstained. But eventually, assuming without considering that the three that abstained eventually joined them, okay. they will have 17 in total. Okay. That means that that 17 has not even formed the simple, the total majority, which can carry out okay. the impeachment process or which can make the chief judge okay, of the state 
to set up a panel of Honorable so this is the stage I, 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 I like I like your analysis and uh, it can only be argued by the other party but let me listen to a political analyst who also been monitoring this uh, do you also share his opinion that the process of impeachment adopted by these 14 members is faulty without even presenting it to the chief judge of the state. And probably I need to also put this on record. The chief judge of the state is not in any way related to the governor, though they bear the same name. So continue, yes. Mr. Fermi. Well, I think for that, Charlie, this is why we have always asked our politicians to be well behaved, to be superly behaved, because of the kind of precedent they must be protected in their control. The deputy speaker of the state of assembly today was part of the people that actually initiated a terrible precedent by using the shortcut to remove a deputy government of those states some time ago. Now, coming back to the issue, Section 143, you understand, I think a lot of members of the House of Assembly of those states have to be taken for a special court without sense of responsibility. Section 123 only requires one third of members to sign this notice. In this case, which there have been about nine members of the Associated of Assembly, not even 14 or 17 that we are talking about here. Of course, the Speaker of the Assembly, they also have made fundamental errors by not following the process of anticipating a response to this allegation you know, from the Deputy Government. But it is wrong to have said that the number of people that signed the impeachment notice were not sufficient. It only requires one shot. It's very clear that the one for the city to sign that notice you know, of the treatment. Of course, it now requires two thirds majority to vote for or against the system eventually when the CJ was taken. He said this are the issues that were pointed out you know, by the by okay. the chief justice. Uh, okay. The uh, but the fundamental question that we must begin to ask our politicians is where they have done their sense of morality. Hmm. What is really the basis of where we are today? The people who are those states okay. voted for a particular political party. Femi, I'm so yes. sorry. Time is far spent and uh, you have so much to tell us. I'm sure the Deputy Speaker has a response. And please, you just have 45 seconds to respond to these in addition to what he has said. Let me also ask. I've heard from Thank the you. camp. I've heard from the camp, the, the 14 man camp that uh, your deputy speakership can only be done outside the House of Assembly. Why are you not on the floor? Please, can you come again? I hear from the 14-man camp that uh, you remain suspended, and that is why you are not in the complex. You are not in the State House of Assembly. How true is that? I told you earlier that the purported suspension mentioned on me and the other two members is a nullity because there is nowhere in our law where they derive the authority or their power to suspend me. So I remain a member of the State House of Assembly and not just ordinary member. I remain the Deputy Speaker of the State House of Assembly. That I, one. Is I, that. I say because of Have my time. I say because the, of my time. Why are you not the, in the State House of Assembly complex? We understand that you, you are not there. That's what the 14 man can be saying. No, 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 no. I participated in both the two plenaries, and I was there before they said they purportedly suspended me. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Why the battle continues, let's hope that uh, men will shit their sword and the right process will be followed. Thank you once again, Deputy Speaker Iroju Ogundeji, who is the Deputy Speaker of Ondo State House of Assembly, and to our very good friend, Femi Lawson, for your intervention. And we hope that the politicians will listen to the voice of reasoning. Thank you for your time. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, it will be time for my take. Please don't go anywhere. Prior to his active participation, the late M. K. O. Abiola was partially involved in Second Republic politics, where he joined the National Party of Nigeria. After these parties went moribund, Moshud Abiola was not just the richest man in Nigeria, he was regarded as one of the most influential and richest Africans. 
by the end of March 1993, when the then military leader Ibrahim Babangida formed two parties, the Social Democratic Party and the Nigerian Republican Convention, Abiola was chosen by the SDP as their candidate. The NRC chose Bashir Tofa and the elections were scheduled for June 12, 1993. The results clearly showed Abiola to be the winner. Nigerians supporting Abiola demanded that power be turned over to him as the rightful winner of the original election. That election was considered by many to have been the cleanest in Nigeria's history, and it finally seemed like the change that Nigerians across the country yearned for was finally coming. But with a shocking change of events, which included the annulment of the elections, which was then followed by Abiola declaring himself winner, he was then arrested and detained on treason charges until his eventual death on the 7th of July 1998, five years after, leaving behind questions concerning his death. An official autopsy declared it as a heart attack, but the circumstances leading to his death left many questions in the heart of Nigerians. 22 years after, we just cannot forget MKO. July 7 marks the 22nd anniversary of the elimination of Chief MK Abiola, the man popularly elected by Nigerians as president on June 12, 1993. Abiola was eliminated after spending over four years in incarceration just because of his blunt refusal to compromise his principal belief that a mandate freely and enthusiastically given by over 14 million Nigerians cannot be overturned by military fiat. The late MKO. Uh, Abiola of blessed memory um, died almost exactly 22 years ago. Um, he was killed by the military junta. Nigeria's current president, Muhammad Buhari, in a move to celebrate MKO and the significance of his life and death, declared June 12 as Democracy Day in Nigeria. He also conferred the honor GCFR on him and renamed the national stadium after him. We demand the entrenchment of the true spirit of June 12, which is free, fair, and credible elections. That is the best way to immortalize MKO Abiola. MKO Abiola lives forever. Today, I really don't feel um, the vacuum he left behind, his absence as created, has been met by the democracy we are running now, yet. But, I see the present government trying so hard to, to replicate some of the things that Abiola said he wanted to be to Nigeria. I see this present government trying to replicate it. There have been numerous reactions to how different Nigeria would have been if Abiola had been allowed to claim victory in the 1993 elections. Today, we look back 22 years later to review the legacy of MKO Abiola, our journey since his passing, and a delayed return to democratic rule, which eventually happened in 1999. Osaogi Ogbonwa, reporting for PLOS TV Africa. This is my take. The situation in Ondo State is one that has been tainted by political interest and selfishness. According to the chief judge, due processes were not followed in the attempted impeachment of the deputy governor. So I ask, what is the problem? Do the lawmakers not know the plan or are they deliberately ignoring it? If the reason is the latter, why ignore what is stated in the constitution? Lawmakers for that matter what then is to be expected of the normal citizens? I urge the leaders in Ondo State to do everything possible to prevent a repeat of the occurrences that plagued Edo State. I urge them to check their leadership consciences by asking themselves, am I working in the interest of the people I vowed to serve? Because remember, your duty first is to the people, not to a sitting governor or your political interest or the deputy governor. 
And that's all for tonight. Thank you for joining us today and throughout this week. Plus, politics returns on Monday, same time. I am Coyote Ladende. Same bye.